Hi, I'm Big Ben, and welcome to another episode of Equip Tips. Today we have special guest and fellow photographer, neighbor from another country, uh, not another country, another county, uh -huh. uh, Scott Jarvie of Jarvie Digital Photography. Scott is a traveling man and a steely-eyed missile man photographer that I have looked up to for quite some time now. Uh, in previous episodes, we've been talking a little bit about a little bit about going into a strobus approach of photography using speed lights and. Mm -hmm. Most of us photographers out there that don't have the studio lights yet, yet want to use artificial lighting, we are most of the time using flashes, right? Mm -hmm. And they're a lot more affordable and easier to use. But the issue is, uh, there's some different modes on them, like TTL and manual and whatnot. And mm -hmm. Scott today is going to be talking about TTL mode and what it is, as well as these new things called uh, the Pocket Wizard TT1 and TT5 flexes. Yep. That, well, from what I hear, kind of revolutionizing the industry and letting us do a lot more than what we used to. So, so you've been talking about manual flash and studio stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah just, just strobist. Strobist technique of simply having the camera in manual mode and taking, getting your flash off camera, mm -hmm. firing it in manual mode with a pocket wizard or any type of radio trigger. So we're on off and we're running over there and constantly having to change power settings and yep. you know, just your basics. And obviously with that, we're limited to our sync speed you know, of our camera. Okay. Well, I think kind of the background might be fun because I know there's a lot of people that will do, they consider themselves natural light photographers and stuff like that. And it's kind of funny because that's what I was for a long time. I just did a lot of natural light photography, did a ton of it, I was known for that. And then there was just a point where I was like, I wanna do something different. And I think that happens to a lot of us in photography, right? Where we're just like, I wanna expand and grow and do something different and challenge myself more. Well, we're gonna make you grow because I'm gonna put my 5X okay. coat on you here and let you take the reins. Okay. This is like a sacred moment here of uh, Grace for lab coatness. And uh, Scott, are you a pop the collar type of guy or or should we? No, uh, we'll keep it down. Okay. There we go. All right, so let, tell me a little, let, give me some background on this. Okay, so what like I was saying, at? I was getting, I said, I wanna challenge myself. All I know, knew was flashing it, hit the, hit the ceilings, kind of flood down the light on, on a reception, because I did a lot, yeah, I do a our, lot of weddings. Yeah, bounce flash, right? We, we, yes, so that we I did that a lot. We take a flash, we put it up, we, uh, you know, put up the little white card, and, uh, you know, it goes up, comes down. Flood the room, shoot like this. And so I said, well, let me try a few other things. I started playing with lights a little bit more, and um, have on the camera, and then I learned the Nikon's uh, had this ability to speak to each other. The camera could speak to another, to the flash off the camera. Like in its own Nikonian language. In its own Nikonian. Nikonian language. So, yes. and we call that TTL mode, right? Uh, no, that's more like the creative lighting. So the more CLS. of the CLS system where where we have a night, we have an on-camera flash or the pop-up flash on a camera. Mm -hmm. And when we click the shutter button, it fires the bunch of pre-flashes, sends yeah. that information, that exposure information to the flash and appropriately, hopefully, fires the flash okay. where it should be, right? Well, I mean, the best way to understand it? Put it, put it okay. in terms that Ben can understand. So this is a, we love that. This is some dude, right? Okay. Bob, the, Bob the camera. Bob the camera. When he looks through there, it has, this, has a metering system, right? Mm -hmm. and, it, and it looks out there and it figures out this metering system and it takes a picture. You add flash into it by even like, you know, a little pop-up flash. It, uh, TTL means it's, it's still metering through the lens. Through the lens, lens. TTL. It's still metering through the lens and Bob still is metering, figuring out what it needs and it t tells its little buddy up here, you should do this much. And, I'll, and sometimes it might help to understand that it might send out a little pre-flash and say, go out there, do your thing, so it's gonna... and then I'll figure out how to adjust myself based off of what you did, and I'll tell you what to do. And, all, and this all happens in thousandths of a second when you click the shutter, it'll... Okay, so now I can, on, on the... On the Nikons here. There's a little setting called remote. And so now Bob has a friend and he can be wherever he wants. And, and through this guy, he'll send out a little message 
saying, go off now. And uh, become one with the unicorn. Yes. <laughs> and so it's still it's still doing the metering over here. He's still figuring it's, out what he wants to do. It's still doing through the lens metering. The camera is still making this a deciding factor. That's the camera. Bob is still the brain, right? Yeah. Bob is still the brain. And so you have this little pre-flash. I mean, someone out there that's going to be really geeky is going to be able to tell me exactly the, the timing and exactly how it works. But he sends out a little thing and saying, let's figure out our lighting. Go off right now. OK, I figured it out. And then he sends another message through a flash. And then it's like this guy has an ear, and he's shouting out the directions. And then if he can hear him, he does exactly what Bob says. And it's still all metered through the lens. But you never really exactly know how much he's going off. Because cause every time you take a picture with through the lens metering, it's going to measure a little bit different every time. So the message that Bob's telling his friend is going to be a little bit different. He might say, I want you to go ahead and fire at this power for this, you know, what it might be. Mm -hmm. And the next time you might hit the button, it might go off and say, well, let's change it up a little bit. We're going to make you fire a little bit more. Okay, yeah. Can that, that's pretty So close. you know how you have the exposure compensation on your camera, the little plus minus? Yeah. And so when you're, when you're looking through the camera and it takes a picture and you're like, that was too dark, and you hit the plus one, well, you can do that same thing on the flashes. And you go plus whatever you, Bob, think that's okay times twice as much light, plus one, or plus two, even or more Or whatever light. you tell it to do. Or, or whatever you tell it to do. So when people are adjusting the TTL, the TTL flash, even if it's the little pop-up, they're saying whatever you think, but times two, or cut that light in half. Okay, so, um, so it's sending out a message, and, and you, the camera doesn't know particularly how close that flash is. So you can come in real close and you're like, oh, Bob, whatever you think, but let's knock it down a, a little bit. In manual, if you've talked about manual flash, you can control just how much duration of that flash and how much, which will control how much light ends up on the subject. Yeah, I mean, we can, you, manual is manual, you have full control. Yes. You know, you, obviously you're controlling the distance by moving the flash. We can say we want a full one-to-one -one or full power ratio or new flashes all the way down to one one twenty eighth power or yes. all the way down. Versus with TTL, Bob is telling what this is, Bob is telling his friend what to do. Yes, and that's more the, the ITTL, the intelligent TTL system. So TTL is still, it's still the concept is the camera's controlling it. And then you add another technology in where the camera control it, but it's not even near the camera. But it has to talk to it with little flashes. And so if the camera's talking with little flashes to his friend over here, mm -hmm. let's say a uh, little friend's behind a wall or something, or it's no out of talkie. a visual range, it's just like putting some earphones on him, and he isn't going to hear the message no, Bob's giving him, is he? No. And that's, that can be a problem. I feel like this little kid show. He's not going to hear the message at all. He isn't going to hear the message. No. Sharing is caring. <laughs> so here's the thing. We can, we'd take it off camera, and that's what I would used to do. And I'd, I'd, I'd hand the mom or, or one of my assistants the flash and say, don't cover this up. Hold it like that. Point it towards them. Voice-activated light stand. Yes. They think they have a good union, but they're practically slaves. <laughs> so in, in the pop-up flash, you can even command it. In the, in the menu, you can set the controls to be the commander. And, and these can be the, the slaves, the remotes. Now, yes, hold on. Now, that's a really unions. neat thing because when you're shooting on manual mode, your camera's in manual mode and your flash is in manual mode and you're just using a sync cord or a radio trigger, mm -hmm. I can't control my flashes from my camera. Mm -hmm. I have to physically run over to wherever they're at, whether I'm running to a hair light or running to my key light, and I have to sit and play with them and yep. dial in. With the CLS system or an ITTL system, I'm able to control those within the menu of my camera? Yeah, totally. Wow. And so that, per, that just speeds things up. So you can continue having your relation with the subject instead of running over to lights. Which is, which is back, important to have that rapport, yeah. We can control with the little pop-up if we want. But the limitations is it's the flash is only going this way. And what about if you want the flash over there? Or if or your voice-activated light stand is like covering the... Yes. The, the ears. Or what if you have it on a light stand and it's pointed this direction and it, you're into a softbox, 
and, but you want it on this side because this is where the dot is. But if you move it to this side and you're right here, the dot's not there. Bob's not going to be able to talk to his friend anymore, is he? So, and what if you want the light behind you? The flash doesn't really flash behind you. So a lot of times you put on a, another one and you don't want the flash necessarily to take control of the situation. And we don't want it to add to the exposure. So you either. can just even put the flash, point it backwards. And in these, these creative lighting systems, you can have the main flash do nothing but command shout its instructions in command yeah, just and so you can boom. have multiple lights as well and you can have them on different channel or different groups so one channel just in case there's other photographers shooting nearby there's not too many other needs for separate channels but you can have separate groups so that you can say this one is a this is a and this is b because it's bigger you know and with B's with having different groups so say like i've got these two sets of flashes on A group, mm -hmm. meaning A is in the letter alpha, number one group, and you've got that in B group. Yes. You can now control these groups independently through the menu on the camera. Through the menu on the camera or through the menu on the flash, and it has a faster control. It's just set right there to just kind of like click, 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 you're done. It's Instead enough. of going in through a menu system, it's all about speed. And in a speed situation, such as maybe a wedding or something where you know, you do have your lights set up. You are allowed to use speed lights at the ceremony and you need to click, click, click. Mm -hmm. And I don't have time to run down the aisle, you know, and, you know, attack the groom to reach my light. It's behind him. That yeah. would be a really good, good alternative to do it. And a lot it. of, a lot of people will use um, radio triggers because they're in, let's say a reception venue and the lights way across the room and they don't want to, you know, this flash isn't necessarily going to reach or they're hiding it behind a bush or a tree. And which is what I do with a lot of my portrait photography. I mean, I'm always hiding lights behind the model. I'm, I'm clamping it up on the ceiling or I'm shooting from such far away at a reception, I'm actually using a, a radio trigger in a repeater mode to just send the signal out there. Mm -hmm. It's great for that. But again, I'm still stuck with that issue with manual where if I wanna change the settings or change the output of my flashes, I gotta literally waddle over there and change it myself. So your little radio triggers that you use uh, most of the brands, like the the old Pocket Wizards or like the Cactus Triggers and the, kind of the... Poverty Wizards. Poverty Wizards. As we call them. So we put them on and they can give a command to the flashes. That command is go. And that's all they can say. On, off. Go. Right now. Fire. Flash. Go. And so you, there are other ones, like for instance, the Pocket Wizard Flex TT5s or TT1s, where you can put them on and now they can give other other commands like go this amount or go this amount. So we have now taken the controllability that we had when using a TTL setup of the Nikon CLS system mm -hmm. and put it into instead of the pre-flash or you know it has to be in a visual range where you know the camera can talk to the flash we have now put that into a wireless radio solution. Yes. That's awesome. This is definitely going to revolutionize help us a lot mm -hmm. so where I have that controllability now, but yet I have the radio. I have all the benefits of a radio, mm -hmm. but the controllability in camera. Yes. So you can put them on your on your light stand, or have someone hold it, and then the decisions. You, I mean, the things you still have to worry about is where the light's pointing, and and maybe how much zoom, and and to put the the modifiers on top. Yeah, you still have to set up your zoom and all that. You know, the zooming. When we talk about zoom on a flash, uh, speed lights have a cool. Uh, have a really unique concept that a lot of studio model lights don't have to where you have a zoom setting where it actually takes the actual flash unit, the flash bulb that is inside of it and physically moves it forward or backward uh, from the actual glass that's on front of it and that controls usually the spread of the light whether we want it more focal or we want it more spread out. It's almost like having a built-in snoot into your flash. Now, it's not as good as an outside modifier because obviously if we move it closer, it's going to affect uh, quality of light and a little bit of as far as power. But it's really, on a side note, that's a really good thing to know. But So let's dive into this a little bit. What have you brought? Uh, well, I usually shoot a lot with the, the soft boxes just to make the light spread a little bit bigger. Yeah, because, you know, obviously this is a... This is a very small light source, and we know that mm -hmm. a small light source is going to be hard. You know, we got to modify this somehow. So softbox is a great answer. So now I put one of these on top. And that's the TT5, right? And uh, what's going to be happening is still Bob is in control of all the settings. 
Um, there's, there's no controls on this thing to necessarily say whatever you thought, but half of that. So you don't have the exposure compensation. Until we can put on top of something that is used to, to dealing with exposure compensation, or flash compensation. Such as another uh, speed light on top. A speed light. Because that has that master. built into it. So the way that this technology kind of works, the best way to understand how this technology works is when these flashes are on top of these, they think they're on top of a camera. So this is just going to be someone holding it. This feels like it's on top of a camera. A camera is used to giving directions to this. So now this is going to give directions to the flash because this is going to tell it what to, what to do. These two things are going to talk to each other. With, with, with the obvious uh, you know, uh, benefits of radio. Yes. Well, yeah. Hide Bob, Bob, can, talk, Bob to... can talk to his friend now via radio mm -hmm. while sending that information because we now have these TT5s that act as like a bus or you know, a telegraph that can send that information yeah. to it. And wow. these flashes, never know, they're never the wiser. They, they just always believe they're on top of a camera and they're doing what they should be doing. Yeah, like I said, you know, they're, they're minions. So you, but also you can, you can do these, shoot these in manual. You can have the, the settings over here set to manual and, and tell it how to go off in manual. And I'll do that a lot of the time. Okay, so here's the, the exciting part about it is that when you're doing the studio type stuff, you're limited to Sync 200, speed. 250. 250 of a second. You get the little black border. Which is horrible, especially if I'm outside and I need to, I want to shoot at that shallow depth of field. You have a style you want. Yeah, I have a style I want. I want a shallow depth of field, but obviously because it's so bright outside, I can't go any faster than 250th. I can't drop that ambient light So I'm, I'm consistently shooting with like, say the 85, 14. Uh, during the midday, so maybe up to eight thousandth of a second, 100 ISO, 1.4, but I'm using flash. How are you? How are these able to cheat sync speed? How come you're not seeing a, a shutter curtain in your image? How is this happening? It's it's some crazy technology. It's actually a lot more complicated than you might think. But they're kind of like, I don't know. I've read some books and it still kind of blows my mind. But what I do know is that it's sending out a few different like flashes. And it's able to, it's able to take a picture without the bar at, at high high speeds, and it's I don't know. Canon calls it maybe fast speed sync, and uh, then we have high, high and speed then, sync. And then Nikon's calls their FP. They like call it FP, okay, yeah. FP, and, okay. and it's a high speed sync mode. And how great is that that we can now go above that two fiftieth of a second? Because yep. in the past, if I'm shooting an outdoor portrait and you know in the middle of the day, and let's say you know. I want to get that ambient light nice and dark because mm -hmm. the sun, so the sky actually looks blue and not blown yes, out white. Exactly. I can now go past two fiftieth of a second and keep my aperture open to do that. And but in the past, either either I had to put an external neutral density filter on, or I had to, yep. you know, uh, cheat sync speed and then go and post and actually crop out that black bar and just yeah. compose around it. So that's really amazing. I think this is gonna definitely change the way we think. Yeah. Uh, I remember I was shooting with you what, a couple months ago at a, at a festival, and it was a really bright noonday uh, with a little bit of clouds outside, but not enough clouds to even make it an open shade situation. And here you are out there with these things, getting a perfectly exposed background where it's nice and vibrant, and yet the models are still exposed. And you said, ah, I'm shooting at like two thousandths of a second. And I'm all, what? Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Take your camera, take a picture of the background. Get it, the sky looking the way you want, maybe a moody, dark kind of background, and then just add in the lights later. Two, three lights to kind of just throw in light onto the subject so they, so you, it's kind of two things separate. You're, you have exposure for them using the lights, and then you have exposure for the background because you know, you take the picture without the flash, you know, click, click, and, and, sh and move it up to like, Four thousandth of a second, but keep the shut the aperture low because that's the style you yeah, want. Yeah, we want that that creamy depth of field. I mean, you got that eighty five one four. Let's take advantage of it. And, and that then goes... you tell then you tell the you tell Bob to send a message to his minions. Go three times like like the TTL plus three is like much much brighter than you would ever have thought. And and, and then you tell and you can even have it on aperture mode when you're telling the camera make a darker image. Go really dark but you're telling the flashes, but you guys be really bright. So it kind of like evens out, plus, plus three here, 
I mean, minus three here and then plus three here. And you just play with all those different ratios. Thanks, thanks so much, Scott, for coming out this yeah. week. Mm -hmm. uh, we've learned a lot about uh, TTL as well as the new Pocket Wizards where we can get TTL controllability and functionality in a radial solution. Uh, for a large man like me where I have to run over to my flashes all the time, this is definitely gonna speed up my workflow, mm -hmm. uh, leave me more time to have the rapport with my subjects, uh, keep bride's mother for, from assaulting me in anger. World peace. World peace. And double rainbows. And double rainbows. All the way across. The all the way across. I'm Big Ben with Equip Tips, and I bid you good shooting. <laughs>